Hey, welcome back to part four of this Claw 2 Substance Painter series. Um, we're going to look at creating some smart materials today, but the first thing I want to just do is go to my texture set settings and change my resolution size from 4K here to 2K. Um, this should make this whole thing process a little bit quicker because we're going to start to add in a lot more um, details to these this look. So now I just dropped it down to 2K and we still have a pretty nice um, visualization here. We can still export 4K, but now I'm just going to drop this down to 2K. Um, what we want to do is get some smart materials from this kind of leather stack that we've created. And um, that smart material we can apply to any other um, 3D models that we would work with in Substance. Um, the one thing we want to check is that we are now working with some baked maps so if i go in the texture set settings and i scroll down these are the maps we baked inside substance and these will be baked on any other model that we import as well so this is a process inside substance so this can all stay in the material but we want to take out anything that comes from clear and what i mean by that is if i look in this base material we have height and normal maps and um, this height map from the stitches that we exported from Claw and the normal map for the puckering that we exported from Claw is all only applicable to this model. This does not work on other models because this is only about the UV tiles of this specific export that we've created. This won't work on other other objects that we import into Substance, whereas these will, because we will bake these per model as we go through inside, um, you know, inside Painter. So what we're going to do is just separate basically the height and normal um, details that we've brought from um, Clo, we want to put them into another folder and then create a folder that's just for the texture. Um, and the way I will do this is to select this base material that we've got the height and the normal map in, and I'm just going to press X on both of these slots to remove the, the textures that are in there. And you'll see immediately we kind of lose those bits of detail, the stitching and the, the puckering. That's not a problem because we've already set up this stitch color mask here and if i add a height value into this um and i push this in the upward direction then we bring our stitches back immediately um as a bump using the height map from before so that's that's just using this stitch color if we add a height channel here we now have a, a height controller for the stitches as well as having the color controller for the stitches so that's how we transfer the um the top stitching and then i'm just going to add one more fill layer and with this fill i'm just going to set this to normal i'm going to turn off all these other channels just use the normal channel and then over here i'll search for the base texture we had before so the this base material normal was the puckering detail so if i drag this into the normal map um, we bring back the puckering. So if I look here in my normal height and mesh, um, we should have some puckering visible around the edges. This isn't too strong. So if I call this puckering 01, we see it, but it's not super, super strong. So if I just duplicate this layer, um, I can duplicate it multiple times. It will start to add in more visible um, puckering. So if I look at this in material mode now, um, in the channels on the top, um, I have like these three levels of puckering visible now. So I think I'll just put two and I'm going to take these guys and put them in a folder. If I highlight them and click the folder, um, I can name this puckering and I'll put these three puckering controls into this folder. Close that out and then I can just leave this one named stitch color um, and I'll put and height because we're using this as a height and as a color right now. Um, everything else is using generators that are created from bakes that we did in substance. So now what we can do is create another folder here and call this um, smart fabric because we're going to use this to develop other fabrics and not just leather. So if I take all these layers that we've stacked together up until the stitch, everything that's not stitches or puckering, all these other layers and this base material, I drag these into the smart fabric. And now I should have 
um, three things. Right, this is in the smart fabric folder. So I have my fabric, which is the base fabric. So if I turn this on and off, this is my fabric. I have um, a stitch controller here and I have a normal map puckering control here. So these are the three things that I'm building up my detail with. And now that we've created this smart fabric, I'm gonna right click this and click create smart material. And if I look now on the left side in my smart materials, which is the second icon in with these um, these different um, kind of balls, like this, this is a material. If it's just a normal circle, like a normal sphere, it's just a, a classic material grid. If it's got this ridge in it, this is called the smart material. So if I go down to smart fabric, which I think I'll actually rename this called new because I have multiple ones in there and I'll do this again create smart fabric let's create smart material and I've called smart fabric new so now if I close down this leather jacket folder and I look in example at the pants folder that we've kind of sectioned off before um, I can delete this base material that's already in the pants because we have a new one so I'll delete that and then I will drag and drop this smart this new smart fabric that I've created into the pants folder and now the trousers are create you know they're textured in the exact same way as the jacket so they have the edge thicknesses it has the all the, all the roughness details and everything that we've created in the other ones that is now available as a as a smart material so this applies in the exact same way but what we can do now is now that we have this new set of layers we can adapt these to look like something that isn't leather so the first thing we can change is the base color and if we put something like a lighter shade maybe more of like a, a light green color something like this um we can go back in now and add in different layers of detail different layers of um roughness and create like a, a twill or a, a canvas fabric for the trousers without to rebuild this whole thing that we did in the first part um so the the main things that we're going to need are um the normal maps that we added into these slots here because we have a wrinkle normal map and we have like a leather detail normal map here um and we can take some of these from clo directly so if we look in clo and we have our materials here right now these materials have no normal map they have no text inputs like on this on the material builder one side but if I go to fabric in Clo and I look for say the heavy cotton tool and I open this up I have normal map input here that I can work with and if I press open I should be able to find this folder if you can't find the folder when you like open the normal map thing here the folder is called it's in your user folder in public public documents clo assets materials fabric and then in normal maps so I'll, i can paste this link but it will be specific to your computer um but now we can basically access all of these normal maps that are inside color and we can bring them into other programs so i'll show you what i mean by this so if i go if i navigate to that normal map folder and i want the uh, heavy canvas I'll take the heavy canvas normal map from the core directory, plug this into uh, substance. I'm going to add this as a texture and I'm going to add this into my library so I can use it in other projects and click import. And now I have a heavy canvas normal map here. So if I go into my leather detail layer one and I remove the normal map and then I drag into this the canvas and I look now at my fabric, I will have produced more of a, a canvas weave than um, than a leather leather bump. So again, I can change the tiling of this. I could make this a bigger canvas structure or a smaller. I'll leave it somewhere about 4.5 maybe. Um, so now we can start to add in additional layers of detail and not build this completely from scratch. So I can rename this. Um, canvas detail and then the wrinkles i think we can leave because we want some of that natural surface detail so the wrinkles we could leave 
um we could go to the normal map intensity in the layers here so i'll go to normal map in the layer channel and then i can bring this um this amount of wrinkle down a little bit by just using the blend option so take the 100 percent value down um, just to reduce a bit the amount of wrinkles on the pants but still to keep some natural movement um the gloss roughness i think i'll turn off because um it's preferable to see them a bit drier than the leather i think and then if i go to the uv border distance this looks a lot more intense and visible on the pants so i'm just gonna go to the uv border distance and if we look at this in the height channel it might be more uh, visible so if i look at the height map zoom in a little here um, the UV border distance, the balance I can bring down to get a much thinner kind of edge on these trouser pieces. And the blur, we can keep the intensity down a little. And then let's go back into the material. So they're quite sharp, these border selects on the trousers. So again, I can go into the height channel. So if I select UV border distance in the edge thickness, I go down to the height channel and then I can just reduce this, this amount a little bit more. So maybe down to about a six and I just see a little bit of impression in the seams and the edges of these pieces. Um, I can turn this on and off and we see the, the thickness more closely. Um, from here now, we can start to look at if we want to keep the rust, if we want to keep the dirt. Um, the dirt, I'm going to select the dirt channel, I'm going to go to base color in the layers, and I'm just going to reduce the amount of like visible dirt in the base color, and just to make them look a little bit softer. And there's a lot of roughness as well, I think, coming from this dirt, yeah. So if I choose the dirt as well, I go to the roughness channel under the layers, and then I remove, I reduce this kind of layer amount down to about a 10. Um, now we've got a more canvas looking fabric that is a bit rougher than the jacket. Um, so I'll go back to the base color. I think I'll make this more like the kind of color we had before, like a beige. Uh, about there. Maybe that's too yellow. About there. Um, and very quickly by doing that, we've added in the um, this new fabric. And it's quite a quick process now that we have smart materials. The only thing we do want to add into this is now the, the same stitching and puckering details. So if I go to the leather jacket, I could take the puckering and the stitch colors and i could uh copy these layers and i could go to pants and then i could right click and i can paste these layers so now within the pants i should also have this puckering control so maybe i'll turn off one of those controls just to view a little bit of puckering yeah we'll keep two on actually and then for the top stitches um the color we can bring to a more tonal color for the trouser and for the height we could change the impression a little bit because it looks quite high so we could move this down a bit so they're a little bit less pronounced so here again we've added stitch details we've added puckering we've added edge details um and quickly started to generate new surface for the the pants fabric so we can repeat this for all the fabrics that we need in this look now so the next one we want to look at really is the lining um actually these are in the wrong place so if i take the puckering and stitch and height here and i drop these into the pants they are now affecting just the pants because before they were outside this folder so make sure everything is in its respective folder um and now we see that we have puckering stitch color and height channel and the smart fabric all in one folder so for example for the lining um 
we don't really see this so i don't want to add too much detail into this because we don't need to calculate all that data um so for the lining we can just stick with this base material we could add a roughness channel to this make it feel a bit rougher um we could add um an, a layer on top of this that is just um a twill so the twill saved already in my uh layers in my image textures over here so i'm going to take this twill normal map and i'm just going to add this to the lining and if i zoom in on the back neck this tiny piece of lining we can see here um i'll just change this tiling to be a lot finer and we could even add a little bit of metallic but I'm not going to do because again we're not even going to see this so now there's a little bit of detail added to this lining but it's not um it's not super necessary we could add another color on top of this actually it might be nicer in a dark darker shade and then maybe some roughness that feels a bit shiny like a acetate type of lining so that is just a very quick way to build a super simple fabric for the lining without needing to recalculate all of these layers that we need for this much higher level of detail. Um, and then the next thing will be the t-shirt. So right now, we again, we have a, the base material applied for the t-shirt. Um, and we could do the same thing again that we did for the, um, for the leather jacket. So if I go to my smart materials, and I look for fabric, I have smart fabric new. I'll come to t-shirt, I'm going to delete this base material that's already in there. And then I'm going to drag into t-shirt the new smart fabric that we created before. Um, so now we have like a leather look on our t-shirt. Um, I'm going to turn off rust. I'm going to turn off the gloss and rough details we can keep the wrinkles we can keep and then again we're going to change out the leather detail and call this t-shirt detail and in order to add this detail here we're going to use a normal map again so i'll remove this leather normal map on the the properties in the top choose the t-shirt detail in the right side and then i'm going to look back in my clone normal maps folder and i should have here knit cotton rayon jersey I'm going to drag this into my um, my library. I'm going to import this as a texture, and I'm going to import it into my library so it's available in other projects and hit import. And then this cotton rayon jersey normal, I'm just going to drag it into this normal map slot here. And we see now that we have a kind of uh, knitted jersey structure instead of the um, leather structure. Um, I have a gloss layer on this, so I'm actually going to turn this rather from the gloss side to the rough side to make it rough. So I'll reactivate this gloss layer, and instead of it being glossy like this, we push it the other way and we add roughness in. So I'll add the roughness, and we're using shift and right click to kind of rotate my light to see how this is affecting things. Um, if I go to t-shirt detail again that we just created, and then I look in the tiling, I'm going to increase the tiling a bit to get a finer grain of like knit structure basically and then i'm going to change this color the base color to a, a kind of white tone um the dirt seems to be doing a lot here again so if i look in the dirt tunnel and i turn this on and off we've got a lot of um of color being added into this dirt so i'm going to go into my base color channel in the layers here so select base color go to dirt and again, reduce this value quite a way down to about 20. And then let's just turn rust on and see what happens. Rust doesn't look too problematic for this t-shirt, actually, so we'll keep rust on. Um, wrinkles is fine. Um, we can close this up. And if we look in just our t-shirt folder now, we've lost our graphic that we had before. So we can bring that back. Um, and I'm going to add a fill layer. I'm going to add to the to this fill, I'm going to right click and add black mask. 
and I'm going to set the fill color to the color I want my graphic. So let's, for now, let's just visualize it as red. And I want this to affect color and height and roughness, the other channels we don't want to deal with. So this is going to become our uh, t-shirt graphic. So I'll rename this layer t-shirt graphic. And that graphic was imported using our stitch maps from before. So if I go into my textures on the side and I type in stitch, I have my the diffuse maps that I exported from Clo before that we use as height maps. Um, right click on your black mask that you've created on the t-shirt graphic layer. Right click here and click add fill. And then we'll have this grayscale slider here and we can select set this fill to black or to white. Instead, we're going to input this, the stitches maps we created before. I'll drop these in the grayscale slot. And now we have um, our t-shirt graphic is visible. If I go back up into my t-shirt graphics layer, like out of the fill and into the graphic layer, and I choose the red, the red layer, I can use these controls now to affect height and roughness. So if I move this up, I get an impression of this graphic, like it pushes it out, or I can indent it, like embossed or debossed. And I'm going to push it out so it looks like there's a layer of ink kind of laid across the top of the t-shirt, like a, a screen print. And then the roughness, I can either make really rough or I can make this shiny. Again, you can use shift and the right mouse to, to select this. But now I have to, to rotate the light and see how it's affecting. But now I basically have a controller for the t-shirt color. So my color of my t-shirt is going to be in this base material here. So I could push this now back to a black color, for example. And then I have a, a color option for my um, graphic as well. But again, when I push this to black, I notice that there's a lot of dirt affecting this. So I might just turn off the dirt and rust channels. It's rust. So if I look at rust in the base color, this is really set to almost nothing. So if I set this blend on the side to one, I'm just going to turn it off. Rust is off and the rest is, is fine. So now we have um, a smart material that we've created, that we've, a material that we've created from a smart material um, to add this fabric to the shirt. I left the neck trim as a separate um, material for a, a specific reason that we want to have a different scaling of the fabric. So if I look in my t-shirt, I open up my smart fabric, I go to the um, t-shirt detail and I'm just going to make this scale, this thing a little bit bigger because I'm in 2k we're starting to lose the detail quite quickly but if I look at this in 4k it should be it'll be a lot more visible. Um, I'm going to close this up, I'm going to look in my neck trim folder, and I'm going to, first of all I'm going to save this because we need to save right now, and then I'm going to go back to smart materials, actually let's unload the whole smart material, let's just go to textures and look for the knit that I had before, and for the neck trim, the base material is black so we can keep this this color set up as we've got it now because we just want to add into the normal map so i'm going to remove this normal map from this best material here and i'm just going to drag in actually no i'm not because i want to control this separately so let me just put control and z to go back i'm going to add a layer on top of this that a fill layer that just fills the normal map. So I'm going to turn off all the other channels and keep normal map open. I'll take the Nick uh, Rayon normal map and drop that in here. I'm going to add the roughness channel back into this and make this a similar roughness to the t-shirt. And then with this normal map, um, we can now control this to have like a thicker look on the neck trim than we do on the t-shirt. So it's just a way to kind of differentiate these two fabrics um, because usually your neck trim on a t-shirt is a different fabric to your um, the base color of your t-shirt. So now we have like very quickly inputted a, a, an additional fabric to the neck trim to just have some differentiation between the body and the, the neckline. And that is pretty much all of the texturing done for this model now. So 
um, for the main pieces anyway. The only things we need to look at is the zipper and the metal. Um, but for the main parts of this now, we've kind of covered um, all of these in um, in a nice texture and nice colors that we want to work with. So, like I said, the zipper is the thing we want to look at next. Um, and if you look in the base materials folder, we already have the um, the graphic applied for this. So we can see the graphic of the zip, but it just doesn't look very metallic and it doesn't look very shiny either. So what we're going to do is go to the zipper layer, which is in its own folder. We're going to add a fill on top of this base material and we're going to just add in a height fill for this one. So I'm going to turn off all the other layers and I need for this the base materials that we brought before. So I'm going to go to the left side, search for base materials that we baked from Clo. I'm going to drag this base material and I'm going to drop it into my height map. Um, immediately you'll see like we have a additional detail like now on the zip teeth. Um, but this can be quite, if I look in the height, uh, if I look in, in my layers and I look in my higher, um, it's quite dark. Like comparatively to everything else, this is quite dark. So if I right click on here and I click add levels, I can use um, the input or the output. So if the channel we want to affect, this affected channel is, is base color, but we want to affect the height channel. And then if I drag these sliders in the top, I can make changes to how visible aspects of this this guy is so i'm going to bring the black down to the left and i'm going to bring the gray value down and i'm going to bring the white value down so now we kind of push out more of those um more of those details and i'm going to add on top of this i'm going to add a fill no i'm not i'm going to delete that i'm going to add an effect add a filter so add filter and then click here under the filter and i'm going to choose blur and it will just gently soften off if i turn blur on and off it'll gently soften how this height map is working and if i look now in material view it should we should have some kind of bump in the teeth of this zip basically um i'm going to rename this layer um zip bump and I can also have within this layer a normal map. And if I take my base materials as well, I had a normal map of the zip saved in this as well. So I can drop that in. And now if I look in my normal height and mesh, I have normal. I'm getting this converted into a normal map, which is what I want. Um, the next thing we want to look at is the roughness of this. Um, so if I right click here and I add another levels and I go down here to roughness and I make sure that I am also affecting in the this layer the roughness I can look at my roughness levels and I'll look at the roughness output as well and we should have the ability to take a look at this roughness actually I'm going to do this in a different way I'm going to delete this um this layer here. and i'm going to go back into my material view um so we have zip bump and i'm going to add another fill on top of this and i'm going to affect just the roughness channel and again i'm going to take in my base material here and i'm going to drag this into my um roughness channel and if i now look at my roughness map i have a texture within this but i need to invert this so i'll rename this layer rough zip and then i'm going to right click on this and i'm going to add a filter and then in the filter section in the top i'm going to scroll down and click invert. and now the black will be shiny and the white will be matte and again if i right click this and i add a levels and i set the levels to roughness and then I push some of these values, I can make the, the white tip whiter and the black teeth blacker um, in order to have shinier teeth and more of a matte tip. So just play with these levels a little bit and then go back to material. And if I use shift and right click now, you should see that there's a bit of shine happening on the teeth as opposed to the rest of it. 
um, we can increase this um, this amount. We add a metallic layer over it because we want the teeth to appear as metal. So I'm going to add another fill. I'm going to call this zip metal. I'm going to only activate the metal channel. And I'm going to do the same again in this metallic channel. I'm going to take the base uh, textures from before. And then if I go and look at this metallic map, um, right now we want the teeth to be really white and the tape to be black. So again, we're going to right click, we're going to add levels. We're going to go to base color, change this to metallic, push the black value down and then push the white value up, even move the gray value as well. So that this really becomes a very white shade in the teeth and then go back to material. And now I should have a shiny metallic look on the teeth of these zippers. Um, if I rotate the light, it should be more obvious, but I can kind of zoom in and you see that this is shiny and metallic and the tape is, is darker. Um, for this base material as well, I can right click here. I'm going to add a filter and I think I can desaturate this. Instagram uh, bake light. No, I can leave this. I'm going to delete that filter, but now we have zip teeth. We have, almost everything set up the la very last thing is the metal and i'm just going to open up this metallic folder go to the base material i'm going to activate the metallic channel and i'm going to activate the roughness channel and i'm going to turn the metallic all the way up and i'm going to turn the roughness kind of in the middle so we see now very easily that these end zip ends and our zip pullers have a metallic material attached to them which is exactly what we want. I don't want to go into much more detail with the zippers because they're so small, but now we have metallic information added to them. Um, we could add a color on top of this. So if I just add another fill, deactivate all the layers except the color, change the base color to something a bit darker. So we have a darker shade of, of metal being used. I think it's nicer. Maybe this is too dark. A little bit less. Um... And that's it. We've kind of now set up this entire garment ready for um, taking into Blender to, to produce some renders with. So again, I'm going to go File and Save. And the last thing we want to check before we take this out of Substance is to look at this with some um, iRay render. So if I save this, again, I'm just make sure it's saved because we don't want to lose anything. Press F10 on your keyboard and we should go into iRay render. And we can look at this now in a more real kind of lighting. And if I do shift and right click as well, I can rotate this light around the, the object. Um, I'm going to go to the right side of the screen. I'm going to click on this display and I'm going to change panoramic environment map to soft mod low, which is like a studio light. And this is letting us preview this material before we take it out of painter so the two things i want to do is reduce the intensity of the roughness on this jacket of the shine and i want to change the color of this um this graphic because it's too red so i'm going to press f9 on the keyboard to go back to where i was and here i am now and you see as well the lighting has changed inside the viewport so the light is also now in this screen the same light that i looked at before so I'm just going to quickly go to leather jacket, open up this smart fabric, go to my gloss layer, this layer, and just push the roughness up a little bit on the gloss of that. I want my stitch color to not be white, so I'm going to make this kind of a dark brown tone about here. And for my t-shirt graphic i'm going to go to the t-shirt graphic layer i'm going to look at the, the red graphic input we created and i'm just going to put this to like maybe dark gray it's a white tone like that um so now this is set up and ready to go we've checked it in iray mode we've looked at it in different lights we've added a lot of levels of detail to all the aspects of this and this is now ready to go into blender so i'm going to save this one last time and i will see you guys in the next part ready for some blender